the first major news that shook the world literally was the news of assassination of uh, Hamas political leader Ismail Haniya. The timing, the choice of location and the method uh, and manner in which this uh, assassination took place in the heart of Tehran indicates three possible interests of those who are responsible for this uh, action. Don't you think Washington and Tel Aviv share a common objective and interest of uh, embarrassing and weakening Tehran? US has always supported Israel, but Israel is making efforts, making it very difficult every day for American policymakers to support them. What are the options that, uh, in your view, Tehran uh, actually has to respond to this action? They have declared that we will retaliate. We will take revenge. This should be a major wake-up call for Iranian establishment. They have miserably failed. It's a massive entail failure. What sort of uh, stance you expect from the Muslim world in general and Pakistan in particular on this issue? There are some very interesting uh, narratives which uh, received a lot of attention recently, uh, which alleged that Pakistan's senior military leadership have successfully infiltrated... 600. Uh, yes, 600 <laughs> of them. Entering and, uh, uh, in Jammu Valley. In Jammu Valley. Why would uh, a one fine morning Pakistan send uh, uh, 600 commandos inside Indian occupied Kashmir? My gut feeling is to keep anti-Pakistan part boiling. It's, it's easy for us Pakistanis to talk about it. But forget us, even no regional or global um, credible media outlet gave it any importance. So uh, this was a foolish uh, attempt on their part, I think. This is a huge failure of uh, almost a million men under arms who are deployed in Indian occupied. It makes sense why the international media and community uh, take such allegations with a pinch of salt. With a fresh episode of The Weekend, I am Murtaza Solangi. And I am Muhammad Ali. Shaji, we sit here every week and uh, try to look at what has happened a few days back and what's about to unfold. Uh, early Wednesday morning, uh, as we turned on TV or uh, looked at our small screens that we normally look at these days, the smart devices. The first major news that shook the world literally was the news of assassination of uh, Hamas political leader Ismail Haniya, who usually lives in uh, Doha, Qatar, but was in Tehran to attend the oath taking and inauguration of the new Iranian president, getting killed right in the heart of Tehran. And this has been talked about all over the world, including Pakistan, how that happened, what its implications are globally, regionally, and on uh, Iran itself, and also in the backdrop of uh, U.S. <coughs> presidential election. So, what are your thoughts? Muntasab, um, the timing, the choice of location, and the method uh, and manner in which this uh, assassination took place in the heart of Tehran uh, indicates three possible interests of those who are responsible for this uh, action. The real target uh, is not merely 
the uh, elimination of Palestinians from their lands or uh, occupation of Gaza, as is commonly believed. But in my assessment, the assassination of uh, uh, the political leadership of uh, Hamas indicates the real war objective of Israel is to dismantle Hamas, not just militarily, but also politically and uh, fragment its uh, structure. Because uh, Smail Hania was also spearheading the international diplomatic and political efforts uh, to gain sympathy and support, uh, not just uh, military assistance for Hamas. So uh, his assassination is a huge dent to Hamas ability, uh, not just to gain military assistance, but also gather political and diplomatic support from around the world. The second aspect is the location and the timing and the method in which uh, uh, this event took place. That also indicates that the strategic objective of Israel was not merely uh, to bring about a change in the Hamas leadership, but to embarrass Iran in front of all the non-state actors which seek support from Tehran. That uh, the message, the strategic signal is that uh, if the leadership of uh, those organizations are not safe in the heart of Tehran, then uh, how can they expect support uh, from Iran while fighting Israel? That is the second message. The third message is also very uh, significant in terms of intelligence warfare. According to the latest uh, New York Times story, uh, in which it cited uh, seven different sources, both Iranian and Israeli. Um, the most plausible theory of how uh, this assassination took place was based on uh, planting of an explosive device in the very room in which um, Ismail Haniya has always stayed, despite very stringent and strict security of uh, Pastaran in Club and IRGC. And uh, according to the latest reports, this device was planted months ago. So this intelligence and security breach is a huge embarrassment, um, which uh, is a signal to Iran that uh, the Israeli intelligence organization, Mossad, is keeping a close eye on all the political and military leaders of its opponents and can strike with impunity. But another factor which I would like your comment on is uh, its timing in the context of the upcoming US elections. Do you think uh, the timing of this act uh, represents an opportunity uh, of choice for Israel? Or do you think uh, you expect some uh, pressure from Washington uh, after this action, which could destabilize uh, Middle East further? Let me answer your first question first, and then add my two cents worth uh, uh, assessment of this situation. This has really shocked and uh, hurt a U.S. presidential campaign on both sides. Uh, number one, it has hurt um, Biden administration. I'm sure you remember when uh, uh, just a few days back, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu came to U.S. Congress and he got a lot of ovation. Um, Vice President Kamala Harris chose to stay away from that uh, <clears throat> proceedings, the hearing. Uh, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi too stayed away. And Kamala Harris gave a statement that we will not watch 
this Gaza thing silently, um, hinting that her policy would not be so soft on Netanyahu style of Israeli politics. And on top of that, this current strike has <clears throat> put them in an embarrassing position. Now you have seen uh, even Biden uh, coming out and saying uh, this has created complications and uh, uh, this has affected uh, the, uh, the relative tranquility or peace, whatever that is left off <laughs> after Gaza. So it has put them in a difficult position. But let me quickly um, ask you a question which you can uh, elaborate further in your assessment. Don't you think Washington and Tel Aviv share a common objective and interest of uh, embarrassing and weakening Tehran and uh, uh, sort of reducing its uh, influence over several non-state actors that it supports um, in the Middle East? Don't you think uh, the reduced trust uh, by the non-state actors in Tehran's ability to support and secure them indirectly advances U.S. interest? That's true. You're right about it. But let's, uh, you know, reverse our gears a few months and a couple of years back. What was U.S. trying to do? What U.S. was trying to do was to embrace Gulf countries, create a liaison and relationship with Israel, Abraham Accords and this. And they were creating a situation as if Muslim worlds were going to recognize Israel and Palestinians would be pushed to accept a shameful surrender to Israel and take this occupation as fait accompli. That was the situation before this uh, uh, October uh, Gaza crisis when it started. Now, where are those Gulf countries now? No country worth their salt can afford to go to that situation. So that Abrahamic uh, Accord and this, uh, um, all this uh, new coalition building of Muslim countries was actually aimed at isolating Iran. Diplomatically. Diplomatically. Now the reverse has come true. So this is a major, major failure of US policy. So on one hand, US has always supported Israel. But Israel is making efforts, making it very difficult every day for American policymakers to support them. So that is the problem. And this problem has deteriorated, has worsened after uh, Israel's uh, massive, uh, brutal, <coughs> disproportionate attacks all over uh, the Palestinian areas, including Lebanon, and extending this war theater. And this has happened in the new media arena where social media dominates the TV idiot box. So what you are saying uh, makes me understand that perhaps uh, the excessive and frequent use of hard power by Israel has cost the U.S. dearly in terms of its soft power, uh, particularly in the Muslim world and the Middle East. But do you think the Biden administration and the emerging uh, preeminent uh, presidential candidates can afford um, this price that the U.S. is paying uh, of tolerating um, the Israeli belligerence in this region? Well, as we move forward uh, <clears throat> towards the uh, U.S. presidential uh, race, 
we have yet to see uh, the first debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, who is trying to drag his feet somehow on one or the other pretext, but they would have to uh, have this, uh, as I understand. We will see both parties and both uh, uh, leaderships would assess how much they can change on this uh, uh, Israeli situation. It also has a, a lot of bearing on what Iran does before U.S. presidential election. Let's discuss that quickly. What are the options that, uh, in your view, Tehran uh, actually has to respond to this action? Well, as you too have seen the news reports coming out of Tehran, officially and unofficially, they said, we shall retaliate. We will uh, avenge this uh, attack, uh, which is, uh, as you rightly said, it's not just attack on Hamas. It's actually attack on Iran and to instill fear in the proxies of Iran uh, to discourage them to have this uh, uh, relationship with Iran. So it has many, you know, uh, purposes. But what I want to say is they have declared that we will retaliate. We will take revenge. However, the timing, the extent, the location, the intensity of that retali retaliation would greatly affect the U.S. presidential election. For example, my, my humble position is if Iran delays it for less than 100 days, because there are less than 100 days before the U.S. election, the the impact and the victimhood uh, mood would actually hurt pro-Israeli sentiments in the US. It will embolden um, the mood in America on both sides not to go, um, you know, this uh, uh, gung-ho attitude in supporting Israel. So that means that Iran also ha faces three dilemmas. Funds, the first off, at the public level, at the international level, face saving uh, to sort of avenge uh, this embarrassment. Um, secondly, not to provide US and the Western powers a strategic opportunity to use Iranian reaction to further isolate and weaken it. Uh, and support Israel more uh, militarily, diplomatically, economically. And the third, retain the trust of those organizations which rely heavily on Tehran's support to wage their uh, campaigns against uh, Israel. So I think uh, the choice of target, the method um, and manner in which Iran uh, will retaliate, will be based on these three factors. Because I think uh, one particular challenge that their strategic planners in terms of target face, that they lack uh, a similar penetration within the uh, Israeli political and military leadership circles, which Mossad has exploited. And secondly, if they go for a proportionate and similar target for a high value political or military leadership of uh, Israel, it might not have the desired public reaction. In contrast, if they go for indirect strategy using again uh, their uh, sympathetic groups like Hezbollah, Hamas or uh, Houthis, it will again not strengthen and repair the trust that their followers and sympathizers expect from them. 
हाउ एवर इफ दे गो फॉर अ डायरेक्ट कन्वेंशनल अटैक सिमिलर टू द वन दे कैरिड आउट अर्लियर यूजिंग फ्यू हंड्रेड ड्रोन एंड मिजल्स दैट वॉज गुड ऑप्टिक्स दैट वॉज गुड फॉर ऑप्टिक्स दैट वॉज दैट गेन लॉट ऑफ मीडिया कवरेज शोड एंड डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड इरानियन रिजॉल्ट बट स्ट्रेटिकली एंड मिलिटेली इट डिड नॉट अचीव एनी थिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंट डैमेज being caused to the israeli it, leadership it and to be emboldened uh, israel they oh look at our uh, uh, defense capabilities look yes. at our resilience the hundreds of attacks came and did nothing but so, but, but my last question on this topic before we move to uh, another well, topic is that uh, what sort of uh, stance you expect from the muslim world in general and pakistan in particular on this issue i'll i'll tell you but let me just uh, where at cap of israelis are netanyahu if i am netanyahu what would i expect or want from iran to do i would want them to encourage iran to attack now or in few weeks before us elections this is what they would want whether it really hurts israel or not that's a different matter but if if i put myself in the shoes of israelis i would want them to attack now so it impacts the us presidential campaign and creates a pro israel sentiment so powerful that it supports one or the other candidate and whoever wins comes out again with a strong pro israeli rhetoric because if you have noticed after october the mood in the young people of america is different more and more young americans are thinking why are we supporting israel and their genocidal uh, brutal policies how does it help us interests does it or doesn't so this would be an important thing but a um, few more um, uh, sense of my you know wisdom th- thought process this should be a major wake up call for iran establishment they have miserably failed it's a massive intel failure and it also uh, talks a lot about that if you create a strong authoritarian state this this french in franchises your people and creates windows to look towards uh, states like israel i mean this failure would not be possible if they would not get any domestic support so there there is a constituency in iran that's heavily against the uh, iranian establishment so they would have to think on tightening and improving their intel systems at the same time look at what are their weak points number 1 number 2 the choice of ismail haniya ismail haniya was not the military leader he didn't lead this uh, gaza attack in october it's uh, yahya sinwar who leads and a lot of time there's a factional fighting even within hamas the groups within he was the peacemaker he was the glue that tied rival factions even within uh, uh, hamas now look on one hand Beijing was hosting rival Palestinian groups to unify them. We discussed here, that last time. Yes, here Israel by attacking um, Hania, Hania is hurting that unity within even Hamas. But, but you made a very important point that indirectly, not just this uh, attack has uh, uh, hurt the standing and trust of Tehran. Uh, but also the chinese efforts at trying to influence uh, the peace efforts and bringing different factions together and 
emerge as a peace builder within the uh, Middle Eastern region. So this attack has probably um, harmed or dented the Chinese exactly. uh, diplomatic efforts. It has hurt Chinese, it has hurt Russians, it has hurt that emerging new bloc, it has uh, hurt Iran heavily and uh, somehow discouraged its uh, uh, um, uh, proxies who relied heavily on Iran that if Iran cannot protect itself within Tehran, how would they uh, um, you know, help us? So it, it has actually jolted them. But a million dollar question is, has it hurt Hamas and its capability? My answer is no, because uh, Hania was not leading the military effort. It's somebody else, as I said. Yeah, so, yeah. so what I understand from your uh, argument is that perhaps this could force Hamas to expect less from the diplomatic efforts and rely more on the military activity against Israel. The immediate impact of this assassination um, when Israelis signed the death warrants of Ismail Hania, they also signed the death warrants on that so-called peace process and negotiation process for the release of hostage and all that. So this also has another impact. So it's all, you know, who can talk about negotiations? No, no country, no uh, Qatar or yes. any country would now volunteer in this situation. Yes, so this, this, this has so, also- uh, From um, uh, Palestine, uh, let's move to another a very important uh, conflict zone in South Asia, closer to our home, Kashmir. There are some very interesting uh, narratives which uh, received a lot of attention recently, uh, which alleged that Pakistan's senior military leadership and uh, special services group commandos have successfully infiltrated- 600. Uh, yes, 600 <laughs> of them. Uh, and I think infiltration is an understatement. They should use the term invasion. 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 600, 600 commandos is not an infiltration. Yeah. Entering and, uh, uh, Jammu indeed, Valley. In, in Jammu Valley. So uh, what's your take on that? Why would uh, uh, one fine morning Pakistan send uh, uh, 600 commandos inside Indian occupied Kashmir? Well, um, while uh, many uh, pro-BJP uh, TV channels like Republic, they flashed those uh, hyperventilating and uh, uh, screaming on top of their lungs, uh, making the 600, they counted not 601, not 599, 600. So this is simply a, a laughing stock, uh, what they created. Um, no, but on a, on a serious note, why is this a laughing stock? I mean, was there some attendance going on or who was counting uh, the, uh, the commandos and uh, uh, how do they know where they infiltrated from? And if they knew, why didn't they prevent them? My gut feeling is um, to keep anti-Pakistan part boiling uh, <clears throat> after this election where uh, Modi has... Um, humble pie on his face, all this uh, uh, abki bar, uh, um, char so par or teen so par, whatever that slogan was, that that didn't come to fruition. Uh, so to me, it looks like one of the options is to keep that pot boiling and create uh, some kind of uh, xenophobia and uh, support for uh, Mr. Modi. Other than that, I can't think of, I don't have any other information, but the very fact that no world powers, no global media gave it, you know, any importance, um, even 
ना नो बी बी सी सी एन एन आर एनी अदर नेटवर्क गेव एनी इम्पॉर्टेंस टू दिस प्रापेगेंडा डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दैट इंडिया इज द स्ट्रेटिजिक पार्टनर टू कंटेन चाइना इट सूट्स देर इंटरेस्ट बट एट लीस्ट नो मेजर क्रेडिबल मीडिया गेव इट एन इम्पॉर्टेंस इट्स इट्स ईजी फॉर अस पाकिस्तानीज टू टॉक अबाउट इट बट फॉरगेट अस इवन नो रीजनल और ग्लोबल क्रेडिबल मीडिया आउटलेट गेव इट एनी इम्पॉर्टेंस सो दिस वॉज फूलिश अटैम्प्ट ऑन देयर पार्ट आई थिंक बट बट इट मेक्स मी थिंक ऑन टू फर्दर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस इंटरेस्टिंग एंड समट अम्यूजिंग नैरेटिव नंबर वन डिस्पाइट द इकोनॉमिक एंड समट इंटलेक्चुअल इमरजेंस ऑफ इंडिया ऑन द वर्ल्ड से विच इज अ रियालिटी आई थिंक द इंडियन मीडिया एंड दोज हु पुश सच नैरेटिव आई थिंक अंडर एस्टिमेट द एक्यूमेन एंड इंटलेक्ट ऑफ वेरी वेल एजुकेटेड इंडियंस दमसेल्वस टू बाय दीज ऑर्गोमेंट्स uh because uh, 600 commandos from pakistan <laughs> as if somebody was counting them and uh, then you know it seems uh, as a poor uh, effort aimed at uh, presenting the kashmir's indigenous freedom struggle which is un recognized as a pakistani sponsored agenda uh whereas in reality you know very well uh india has failed to produce before united nations or any international body a single pakistani officer or soldier um in almost 30 years uh, as an evidence to support this allegation secondly uh if 600 pakistanis uh, and pakistani commandos infiltrated if at all they did this is a huge failure of uh, almost a million men under arms who are deployed in indian occupied kashmir and the third factor is that uh, uh you talk about barbed wires you talk about uh, mining you talk about uh, high tech intelligence gear uh, i think what uh use all that huge investment from the indian taxpayers money uh is being wasted on the uh, lion share of indian uh, armed forces and they are incapable of uh, preventing detecting and eliminating a few hundred uh, soldiers so i think uh, it makes sense why the international media and community uh take such allegations with a pinch of salt um and uh, despite indian uh, convergences and uh, improved relations with the west while while they have been caught with their pants down uh in canada and us <laughs> trying to kill uh sick leaders and and very interestingly uh, it's, it's uh, important that you brought it up in case of the uh, individuals found uh, to be involved in attempted murder of us citizens uh, this information And was Canadian shared citizens. by the us department of justice correct it is not coming from independent media or private media not coming it is from inform- pakistan <laughs> it is coming from department of justice which means that they have tangible legal evidence of indian involvement in attempted murder of us citizens and you compare that with such ridiculous narratives but uh, but i i i have yeah. something to say uh, i think we have uh, focused uh, and spent quite time today on uh, global and regional issues there are burning uh, issues on pakistan but i think we have run out of time let's have a special episode on what's brewing in pakistan and uh, the issues of political instability and economic so we'll have a special podcast um, on pakistan soon i think we should uh, uh, say goodbye to this uh, episode of the weekend and uh, see you next week thank goodbye. you for joining us goodbye. keep watching this uh, program every week
थैंक यू सो मच